You may hate me But I've got something to say to you You can attack me all you like What's up guys? So, I had a lesson um, planned out actually that God put on my heart last night um, but I'm actually just going to scratch that and I have something new um, <clears throat> so cats calling the door alright so we're going to go into Psalm 40 uh, excuse me Psalm 51 I want to talk about the power of prayer because I feel like I've been praying a lot lately and um, and I've just seen good results uh, not only in my life but in other people's lives um, that when you redirect your prayer um, to pray for for other people, um, you know, what a big difference it makes. So, uh, without getting too crazy here, going into Psalm 51, um, everybody <coughs> probably knows about the David and Bathsheba ac um, accident, uh, the David and Bathsheba <laughs> incident, um, where, you know, David committed adultery and then he uh, killed, killed her husband. Um, so, anyways, um, going on with that, he was uh, he comes to God with a prayer. Um, we'll, we'll we'll just start with verse one. It says, "Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great uh, compassion, blot out my transgressions." <clears throat> the first thing we need to know about prayer is that um, we have a merciful God that that wants that relationship with us. He wants that forgiveness. He, I mean, he wants to give that forgiveness, and he wants us to come to him broken, um, rather than you know go out and do something else with our brokenness, um, like commit more sins. He he wants us to come to him, and <clears throat> David, being a man after God's own heart, just exactly hits it right on the head here. He says, "Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love." See, David knows what's up. He knows that. Um, he knows that God has an unfailing love. Um, according to your unfailing love, and then he adds, according to your great uh, compassion, blot out my transgressions. Because God is compassionate, and because he has unfailing love, um, you know, and, and he's merciful, David knows that there's nothing that he can do to change his situation, nothing to, that he can do to change what he did. <clears throat> but he knows how bad he screwed up, so the first place he goes is to God, and he does that several times in the Psalms, uh, which makes him one of my favorite characters. Uh, so anyways, he goes to God knowing of his merciness and his unfailing love and his compassion, and, and, he, and he says, blot out my transgressions, just completely blot them out. Um, later in verse 2, he says, wash away my iniquity and, and cleanse me of my sin. Um, it's just such a, such an amazing mercy and it's such an amazing power that God has in the ability to wash away our iniquities and our transgressions and um, and cleanse me from our sin. Um, in verse 7 he says, Clean, Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Um, and yeah, this is these are things that, that only God can do and these are things that God wants to do. God is our eternal Father. So when we go to Him in prayer... Imagine your mother or your father <clears throat> and how much they love you. Um, it's unprecedented to the amount that God loves you. Um, God has the ability to uh, not only unconditional love, um, such as your, your worldly um, parents may have, but God has the ability to blot out your transgressions, eternally speaking, and wash you whiter than snow. Um, and it's because of His mercy that that when we screw up, that's the first place we need to go. Um, going on here, um, David says, For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Again, he's he's just being burnt in this, in this mistake that he made, but he's going to God about it and talking. Uh, my sin is always before me. Every day he wakes up, he's faced with this. Against you... I have sinned. He sinned against God by committing what he did. Um, and then going on, and done what is evil in your sight, 
so that you prove right when you speak and justify when you judge. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justify when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth. David talking about being born into sin. We're natural sinners. Uh, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. So, verses 3 through 6, um, David is, he's acknowledging his sin um, now that he's before God. He's acknowledging his sin and saying, God, I know that you know I was, I was a sinner at birth um, before you even knew my name when I was consumed. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> conceived when I was consumed. Um, but he says, he also says in verse 6, Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. What David is saying, that on the outside I'm, I'm broken, I'm a mess, but eternally, eternally and internally, um, God knows David's heart and he knows what he is capable of. And that David <clears throat> really is sorry for his sin. Um, and then again, touching um, on verses 7 through 9, <laughs> it talks about like what I, what I touched on, God washing, washing the sin uh, whiter than snow. Um, in verse 8 it says, Let me hear joy and gladness. Let, let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and again, blot out all iniquity. Um, verse 8 is just awesome. Uh, let The second half, let the bones you crushed rejoice. And see, that's the thing. Because David knows, going back to verse 1, of, of um, God's unfailing, merciful love, his, his limitless compassion, David is able to come in in worship and acknowledge his sins and, and add that. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Because David knows that the bones he has are not his physical bones that have been crushed, but his spiritual bones. And the reason he can rejoice is because God's going to rebuild him. Um, in 1 Peter, there's, there's a verse. Um, actually, let me see if I can just go there right now. In 1 Peter, there's a verse talking about um, being built into a spiritual house. Um, it says, sorry, I don't want to block my face. It says, um, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. This is the part I want to touch on. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. We're being built like living stones <clears throat> into a spiritual house. Um, going back to Psalm 51, it's David is saying the same thing, just in a different way. He's, uh, he's saying, hey, let these crushed bones rejoice, because I know that, that what you're building for me is, is way stronger than my bones before. Um, so just kind of a cool way to look at it. Um, See, we're going on eight minutes. I like to keep them around 10, 12 minutes, so I'll try to push through this. Um, yeah, let's see. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take the Holy Spirit from me, which restore to me the joy of salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. David, in verses 10 through well, I was really hitting on the spiritual aspects here as we kind of just were, um, the Holy Spirit. Um, David is, is saying, hey, you know, regardless of everything, um, please, you know, just bear with me here, just work with me, and, um, and don't take the Holy Spirit away from me, because going back to that building up of the Holy Spirit and, and the house of stones that we talked about um, in First Peter, David is just saying, please don't take this, um, and, and grant him a willing spirit to sustain him, um, just so his spirit pushes him through. And let's see here. <clears throat> and then finishing up, we'll just, we'll just skip to the end here because we're almost out of time. Uh, verses 16 and 17. Verse 16 says, You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. So when you're broken and when you know that you've sinned, um, unlike the, um, 
the Old Testament type stuff where you had to be a priest and you had to do all this to come to God. You had to like kill things and sacrifice things. Um, God, David is saying here in verse 16, he's like, God, I, I know that that's not what you want. I, I, I know, God, that you don't want me to just burn a sacrifice or, you know, sacrifice a, a lamb or anything. He said, or else I would do that. But he says, you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. It's because God wants what's in here. He wants your heart. And David knows that. Um, he's just laying it all out to God saying, whatever I have to do, I will do it. Um, and, uh, whew, I just got dizzy there for a minute. And yeah, so that, so that basically that basically just touches on, um, again, Psalm 51. Go ahead and read it. Draw your own conclusions. Take it to a place I haven't. But um, coming into prayer... Um, and just putting it all before God, being honest with yourself, and, and following the steps that David did, not that there's a step or a how-to guide, you know, lead yourself, the Spirit will lead you, but just applying the principles that David did in his prayer have yielded him and have yielded me just um, astronomical results, a growth in my spirit. Um, so if anyone out there has questions about prayer or comments or concerns, um, you know, send it my way. Um, if, if this message hit anybody today between the eyes, go to your Bible, open up Psalm 51. If you need prayer, I will pray with you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, maybe my messages are getting better, maybe they're getting worse, I don't know. But it's the second one I've ever done. And like I said, God had, had placed it on my heart to do so. So, I will go out and enjoy this rainy, windy, crappy day in April. I guess that doesn't sound too thankful, does it? I will go out and enjoy this day that God has decided to water the grass with. Um, until next time, peace, God bless, rock on.